Uh, Sean know, McCorkle's a funny fucking guy. He yeah. says some ridiculous shit online. I don't know why. He's more so, humble than I thought you would be. That's what everybody tells me. I'm actually the nicest guy in the world, just not on the internet. So, If you're listening to us on, on, a, on a computer, uh, just, just go with the, the phone. I hear feedback. I've actually never listened to your show, Ariel, not on the phone or anything else. Sean, where are you? I right do wanna, I, yes, please. Well, that's what I wanted to tell you guys. The only reason I couldn't make it today, I had court today. So I got a uh, ticket for using my deceased grandmother's handicap parking pass. Stop. And um, I was, uh, yeah, got, the police officer saw me get out and he was like, is that your parking pass? And I was like, well, not exactly. I tried to get out of it by telling him that if I don't use it, I almost feel like she died for nothing. And he didn't like that. So uh, he went ahead and gave me a ticket. To it and people, uh, people, half the people in there will believe anything they read. So I told some guys I was smoking crack to make the weight. And I've got guys telling me, listen, you don't want to smoke crack that close to the fight. You know, I've got guys sending me email advice on ways to pass drug tests and everything. So... I don't. I guess don't believe everything you read, but unless I write it. Yes, hey, did I tell you about my grandma? She died recently. This really happened. It was sad. My grandma died, and um, she was in the advanced stage of cancer, like final. And I don't know if you ever watched anybody die of cancer at the very end. She was dying at home. It's the worst thing I've ever seen. But um, she was suffocating to death at the very end, like turning purple. It's like it's really hard to watch. So I try to talk my mom and dad into giving her like the rest of her morphine, just letting her die. I guess technically that would be illegal, but like if you've seen anybody die that way, it's the worst way to you know die. And I would want somebody to do it for me. And my mom and dad didn't want me to do it, but I said, I'll do it. I don't mind doing it. They didn't want me to get in trouble. So when they left the room, I went ahead and gave her the morphine anyway, but it actually made things worse, not better. Like she started struggling. So I panicked and I just grabbed a pillow and smothered her to death with it. And it was sad, but I got to tell you that last 45 seconds she was alive. It was the most lively that woman was for the last few months of her life. How do you feel about uh, being the opening fight of the night? First guy out there. Uh, some have called that the curtain jerker, so right. to speak. Y you happy with that label? <laughs> oh, I've never been called a curtain jerker before. Um, not since Boy Scouts, anyway. Right. That's a gay reference. I don't know. Um, I didn't really smother my grandma to death. Everything was true up to the point where I said I smothered her. She did die, though. Um, but I didn't smother her to death. I actually chased her around the house with a hatchet until she died of a massive heart attack running. Yeah. I didn't uh, do that. Does that almost mean that you'd rather be fighting in the curtain jerker? Uh, no, I, there will be no curtain jerking this time around, except at least not till after it's over. Um, I can't make any promises from then. Do that um, my grandma did die, though. I love my grandma. One time, it was awesome. We had a pinata at my little boy's birthday party. And I, I was arguing over who went first. I said, guys, line up youngest to oldest. Grandma, you're behind that oak tree back there. And it was so funny. If she wasn't terminally ill, it would have been funnier. But she was a good old lady. And it was kind of, it was sad, but I loved her. And uh, she liked to joke around a lot. At least I think she did. I don't know how much she'd be for maybe made fun of being smothered with a pillow, but it happens. Like, he, he is. Still, he is probably one of the wittiest people I've ever. He is and, he's, and he's fucking. I wrote him. Shame he had a fight. I, said, I, I was also really surprised that he stepped in uh, to fight. Um, you know, Rashad Evans on short notice like that. Um, I had heard there was rumors that he was uh, going to fight Matt Hamill to rematch, but uh, Matt Hamill wasn't trying to hear it. So we couldn't do. He wasn't going to do that one. But uh, you know, <laughs> wait, it's better. Sean, what a story this is. I remember just three months ago. We were at the media workouts at UFC 119, and you were just like a little kid hanging on the outside, just right. trying to get noticed. Right. Now here you are, you have your own little banner, co-main event. How did this happen? Uh, I think it was interview with you. I think pre-fight interview blew me up all over the world. Uh, so I credit you for any success I have. I will You're welcome. Thank you for interrupting me. If you look uh, at those fights, he's fought some tough guys. So, And plus, have you seen him lately? I mean, the guy's lost a ton of weight. He's fighting at uh, American Top Team in Florida. What are you expecting to see from him on Saturday? Actually, I don't know what to expect. I was actually surprised to see him yesterday. He's bigger than I thought he would be. Yeah, keep walking. I'm a good guy, and I really don't know what to expect going in. I just know he better not try to stand up with me. Why? Because I don't want to get beat up in front of my friends and family. That's why. So that's what beat me. So is this your full-time job? It is. Luckily, I made a bunch of money um, years ago. Despite what I may have told the IRS, I sold the, my business for a bunch of money in 2005. Uh, never considered fighting as anything other than a hobby. Got divorced recently. Thank you for bringing that up. I'm sorry. Yes. Um, got divorced about a year and a half ago, and she pretty much took all my money. What was left of that she hadn't already spent. So, yeah. dude, his he's so witty. It's like he and it's, is it's funny just as like fun. that. What does your ex-wife feel stupid now? Look at you. Yeah, she she felt stupid to me before, but she. Uh, we saw Covington and Biz being uh, going at it on uh, going out on Fox. Uh, I, mean, I don't know inside the UFC or whatever it is. The yeah. post fight show, Biz being trying to jump in and steal his. Uh, Still is thunder, which I thought was kind of, you know, classless, which was amazing coming from this ring. But um, so as I was watching him go back and forth, I thought, uh, man, this must be what John McCain had in mind when he was called UFC human cockfighting.
I don't know. Okay. So, uh, I will say I feel I felt as much pressure for this interview as I have for the fight. Um, like it's been, I've been thinking like, man, I got to top the last one. You know, I can't leave people disappointed. It's probably how like Tom Cruise felt, you know, like before filming a sequel. One of his movies like Mission Impossible 2 or something. Um, well, except that I'm not a Scientologist, I guess, or pretending to be straight. So okay. that's a the, good start here. And I couldn't help but think while I was watching it, I was thinking, man, the last time I saw a guy named Michael Jackson lay that many blows on a punk, the next day, the police raided Beverland Ranch. So, <laughs> um, following through with the CM Punk uh, topic, um, <laughs> I, you know, everybody was talking about, you know, his, uh, like I said, man, three and a half years is a long time. They're like, well, you know, he, he didn't look bad. He, you know, he this or that. And I was like, oh, I don't know. The thing that disappointed me the most uh, watching, uh, watching him really was his cardio, which, again, is ironic coming from me. But I would think. His cardio looked terrible between rounds, you know. I mean, I think the only fighter who spent more time bent over with his hands on his knees in this past year than CM Punk is uh, War Machine. <laughs> it's not like I have, you know, I'm going to do this three or four more years tops, I think, without the uh, help of performance-enhancing drugs, you know, go to Japan and fight or something. Uh, you're looking pretty big nowadays. Yes, sir. How much are you weighing? Uh, I'm on cycle right now. So I'm weighing about 310 pounds. Like if I stopped taking steroids, I would shrink back down. But steroids are awesome no matter what anybody says. They've not tried them if they don't say they're awesome. I'm just kidding. I would never take anything that would enhance my performance, except Viagra. You work rise. I've never really had much respect for guys who talk a bunch of shit and they don't back it up. You know, guys like me, for example. But uh, Kobe really, Kobe, I mean, he came, he brought it, man. He was doing, he was doing great. Um, I was a little disappointed in him, to be honest, that he backed down from smacking Joe Rogan. Like, I thought that kind of showed almost like it's a character he's playing. And uh, besides, like, what has, what has kissing Joe Rogan's ass or trying to imitate him ever gotten anybody, you know, in life besides Brendan Schaub, his podcast, or Brendan Schaub, his T-shirt line, or Brendan Schaub, his spot on the McGregor Mayweather uh, fight, or Brendan Schaub, his stand-up comedy career. But other than that, what has Kissing Rogan's ass ever gotten anybody? I never understood it, right? But I did see. Uh, are you still there? Yes, I'm listening. I'm right. listening. Don't worry. Okay. I'm, <laughs> I'm just. I was gonna say I'm used to laughter, but that wouldn't be true. So, um, I uh, I did see uh, I did see Dana on uh, Dana on TMZ. Um, he said the only problem he's got, the only concern he has, bringing a. Uh, Colby to the White House is uh, he's, you know, afraid that uh, Trump might uh, try to grab him by the Ariel Hawaii. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've often touted my quarter Jewish heritage. Uh, so you and I are kind of, you know, yeah. kinsmen to a degree. Um, you know, I've always said that I'm between a quarter and three eighths. I'm not sure. Uh, you know, I'm a quarter Jewish. So my buddy, one of my buddies tried to say, uh, he goes, dude, that looks just like a Nazi eagle, like trying to give me a hard time, you know. And uh, are you really a quarter Jewish? Yes, I actually am quarter Jewish. Both of my grandmothers are half Jewish on both sides, so I guess if my math is correct, that makes me a quarter, or maybe three eighths. But uh, yeah, he said he said it looked like a Nazi. Uh, being Jewish. So instead, I wanted to uh, I wanted to tell you a story about my family that uh, instead of roasting you or whatever that we could both really appreciate. Like uh, I was at a restaurant one day. Um, and this lady, we were joking back and forth. This waitress seemed a little like rougher edge, and she uh, she made a Holocaust joke, which I thought was uh, kind of inappropriate, you know what I mean, or whatever, like not knowing my ethnicity or whatever. I thought it was kind of kind of rough. And so this actually happened, by the way. Um, she made a Holocaust joke, which I thought was a little you know a little much or whatever. And so I told her, I said, "That's yeah, you know, that's really funny." My my grandfather died at Auschwitz, and uh, she stopped and looked at me. She goes, "Are you serious?" I said, "Yeah." And she goes, "I am so sorry." And uh, you know, I could tell she immediately felt bad. I said, "It's all right. It was it was his own fault. He fell out of the guard tower." So, so uh, I'm there watching uh, Dominic Cruz Uriah Faber fight, and uh, never been a big Faber fan, um, mostly because I, I mean I just don't know how you can walk around that cocky when you are two inches away from having to ride in a car seat. You know, like I don't how you can be that cocky and that small at the same time. I cannot. I cannot imagine that. Because Corky came up. around at the time they wanted to have personalities. And like, and for some Can't reason, find like, more of a personality than Corky. holy shit, dude, he's so money. Like, and the stuff he would say would be just golden. Like, <laughs> like I remember we were doing like the, the Metro Minute and then it started turning into the McCorkle Metro yes. Minute. And I was like, dude, I can't, I can't have you on. I can't compete with you, dude. Like, he's so good. And like, he would have these jokes that I would never have the balls why, to say. Why doesn't he? I was watching them fight and they're both so small. Like, even the referee looks like a giant compared to him. And... You know, like I was watching, I was thinking, you know what, man, if I want to see two little kids get beat up, I'll go to Brett Rogers' house. <laughs>
<laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, I, I can't do this anymore. I can't. Oh, no, I got two more. They're awesome. <laughs> I can't. That is way <laughs> over the line. <laughs> <laughs> I got only two more. No, that that is it worse than that? That is way. No. <laughs> there, there, there. There's two I think this might be the end of the MMA before. hour. I think you might just killed my show. I get back into. I gotta bring some McCorkle love into here at some point. I fucking love that. Dude. Oh, Sean McCorkle, you are a fucking brilliant little piece of shit.